Hello, and in this video of statistics, we're going to discuss what is called a measure of variation. So if you haven't checked out how to calculate the different measures of essential tendency, please do that before this video because you need to know in how to calculate the arithmetic mean of a set in order to calculate, calculate a couple of these things. So let us start with the definition of what a measure of variation is. It describes how much data value varies with respect to other data values in that set. So for example, you can describe how spread out a data set is, how dense a data set is with respect to the middle, the left, the right, and so on. So that's pretty much what a measure variation is going to sort of tell us. So let us start with the most easiest one of them all. And the most easiest measure of variation is going to be the range. So the range, not to be mistaken with the mid-range, is the maximum of the data set minus the minimum of the data set. So this is going to tell us how spread out, or pretty much tells us the range of the data set. It's pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, so for example, I can give you the data set S is equal to, mm, say, 1, 5, 9, and 7. So that means the range of this data set is equal to the maximum minus the minimum value, so that's going to be equal to 8. Now the remaining measures of variation are going to be a little bit more involved, so let's take this one step at a time. So let us describe what the variance is. So the variance describes the squared distance or the sum of squared distance of all values with respect to the mean. So let us take a population, let's start. So let's assume this is a population. So let's assume a population has a data set value of 0, 5, and uh, say 10. Let's make the numbers easy to work with. So it's easy to see that the mean of this population is going to be the sum of all our x values divided by the amount in our data set. So it's going to be 0 plus 5 plus 10 divided by 3, which is equal to, uh, what is that? 15 divided by 3, which is equal to 5. So we want to know what is the squared distance or the sum of squared distances of all these values with respect to this mean value. So to make this simple, I'm going to use a chart. So the first column is going to be all our values, 0, 5, and 10. Then I want to calculate the distance each of them are from the mean. So this is going to be 0 minus 5, 5 minus 5, and 10 minus 5. Then I'm going to square those distances. So that means 0 and 10 are the same distance from 5, just different directions. Squaring that will make that distance non-negative. So this is going to be minus 5 squared. This is going to be 0 squared. This is going to be 5 squared. So it's going to be 25, 0, and 25. And then finally, the sum of those squared distances is going to be equal to 25 plus 0 plus 25, which is equal to 50. So we describe the variance of the population. So this is how we're going to abbreviate the variance. It is going to be equal to the sum of those squared distances divided by the population size. So that's going to be equal to 50 divided by 3 and that is going to come out to 16.67 approximately. So 
We'll describe what this means in a second, but let us first discuss uh, another measure of variation. So the third measure of central tendency, I mean variation, let's see, I used pink, so let's stay consistent with colors here. So the third is what we call the standard deviation. And this is the square root of the variance. So that means the standard deviation, which some people just abbreviate by STDEV, of the population is going to be the square root of the variance of the population. So that's going to be the square root of 16.66 repeated. And then that's going to come out to about 4.08. The fourth measure of variation is what we call the coefficient of variation. And this describes how the data values vary proportional to the mean. So most of the time we abbreviate it by CV, and this by definition is going to be equal to the standard deviation of the population divided by the mean of the population. So the standard deviation came out to 4.08, the mean came out to 5, so that's going to be equal to, let's see, converting to a decimal. It's going to be 8.16 over 10, so it's going to be 0 0.816 approximately. And that's pretty much how to calculate each of these. Let me summarize the formulas here for you. So the first, the range of a population is equal to the max of the population minus the minimum of the population. Two, the variance of a population is going to be equal to the sum of the squared distances over the sample size. And keep note, mu here is the mean of the population. the standard deviation of the population is going to be the square root of the variance of the population. And fourthly, the coefficient of variation for the population is going to be equal to the standard deviation of the population divided by the mean of the population. Now there are other notations that we will use from here on. So for example, notice that all of these are parameters. Which means most of the time these things we are not usually able to calculate. So we're going to notate them similar to how we notated the parameter for the population mean. Now range as you'll see is not going to be that much useful because it only considers two values of the data set whereas the variance standard deviation and coefficient of variation do consider all the values of the um, data sets. So we're going to denote the variance of the population. We're going to denote this to be equal to sigma squared. Sigma squared. And sigma squared is going to note the population variance. 
Similarly, we will denote the standard deviation of the population. We will denote this to be equal to sigma. And why do we want to be equal to the sigma? Well, we know the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance. And the square root and the square root will cancel, so that pretty much gives a reason why we denote variance by sigma squared and standard deviation to be sigma. And sigma is going to represent the population standard deviation. So therefore, the coefficient of variation for a population is just going to be the standard deviation of the population divided by the mean of the population mu. So that's population standard deviation, and this is population mean. So, very important, what about if the set is a sample? And this is where a lot of detail needs to be given. So, firstly, the range of a sample is still going to be equal to the max of the sample minus the min of the sample. That's nothing special. But the variance is usually when things start to change a little bit. So the variance of a sample is going to be equal to the sum of the squared distances from the sample mean. So recall x bar is the sample mean. And we're going to divide by n minus 1. You may ask why n minus 1? We will answer this later. That is the only major difference between all these formulas because the standard deviation of the sample is just going to be the square root of the variance of the sample and fourthly the coefficient of variation for a sample is going to be the standard deviation of the sample divided by the mean of the sample. So in terms of a notation, most of the time you will see that the variance of a sample is going to be written as s squared. The standard deviation of a sample is usually going to be defined to be s. And the coefficient of a variance of a sample is going to be defined to be equal to the standard deviation divided by the sample size. So let me summarize all of these formulas in one little table, excluding the range. So we have the variance, we have the standard deviation, and we have the coefficient of variation. We have two scenarios, the population and the sample. So for the variance, the variance is going to be equal to sigma squared is equal to the sum of x minus mu squared divided by n. The sample is going to be s squared is equal to the, the sum of x minus x bar squared divided by m minus 1. Sigma is just going to be the square root of sigma squared. s is going to be the square root of s squared. And the coefficient of variation is going to be sigma divided by mu and CV is going to be S divided by X bar. And in the next video, we're going to do a couple more examples on how to calculate these things and also describe the main differences in interpretation between these measures.